your reveal so i'm gonna react to um why 50 cent isn't scared of suge knight but somebody from the barbershop like punch you and knock you out after that like and you be knocked out like from the guy from the barbershop do that it changed and they be like suge's outside and everybody be like yeah what do you want <laughs> <laughs> the story of 50 Cent and Suge Knight is one that will be remembered and talked about for as long as hip-hop prevails. It's a real-life tale that digs far beyond your typical music industry games and beef. Undoubtedly, Suge Knight has put fear in the bones of many artists, producers, and executives who foolishly questioned his authority. However, there was another up-and-coming celeb at the time who wasn't afraid to face him. And now... Nah, everybody's scared, bro. Okay, I'm... And the rest make wrong, the wrong niggas. You can't think everybody's scared of you, bro. You just can't. Can't think everybody's afraid of you. It's none other than Fitty said. What did Fitty had on Suge that even Suge had to take a step back in going after Fitty? Something that he almost never did. The first chapter of Marion Hugh Suge Knight Jr.'s biography begins in Compton, California on April 19, 1965. From his childhood days, Suge was bigger in size than most of his peers, and that's exactly what earned him the nickname Suge Bear. That stuck with him. His body size is what swerved him into football and the track and field. Later on, he went to high school and college. His football career was short-lived, though. Suge played for only a few seasons before he started working as a nightclub bodyguard in L.A. With his change in profession, also came a change in his habits. Suge got heavily involved in the rampant LA nightlife, which soon formed his personality, and not in a good way. During his time as Bobby Brown's security, he also got introduced to the landscape of the music industry. Knight moved around folks who were making music, signing multi-million dollar record deals, and making big moves. It's only a matter of time before Suge himself would get a piece of the pie, and he eventually did. Once Suge realized that he could not only provide protection, but intimidate people of influence and make ends meet that way, he found himself as a manager of a record label. Believe it or not, Suge managed to get some of the biggest gangster rap names that we know from Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and the legendary Tupac. Suge found a way to approach all these artists who were at death row just at the right place at the right time. The reason he found so much success as a manager and a label co-founder was because he didn't care about the means that were used to get the desired result. With that mindset, he quickly accrued a lot of power and influence over the LA rap music scene. Because of his vicious and cruel ways, he resorted to violence ever since he got introduced to LA. What started with cutting off his ex-girlfriend's hair in front of her mother's house quickly transitioned into he cut he cut his ex girlfriend his ex girl's mom's as he cut his girl ex girlfriend's hair in front of his mom's bro in front of her mom's bro like that shit that shit OD bro that's kind of that's kind of wild disrespectful if you think about it in front of the mother and the mother just sit there and watch. Sending live threatening messages to Vanilla Ice, framing murders, and eventually getting directly involved in a homicide. However, even though Suge Knight was a notorious gangster without a grain of respect or decency, there was a nut in the rap game of his time who wouldn't be cracked. While he kept things under a tight grip in the West Coast music business, the East Coast was coming up with an artist that was unlike any that Suge or anyone else has seen. See, after Dr. Dre realized where things were going with Suge's bully tactics, he decided to leave his 50% ownership stake from Death Row Records and start again from scratch. Dr. Dre then proceeded to create Aftermath records under the Interscope label, and his decision changed the history of the rap game forever. First, it was Eminem who got signed to Dre's label, and then, on M's recommendation, Dre signed the upcoming NY artist with nothing but raw potential to his name, Fetty said. Coming from the South Jamaican neighborhood of Queens, Curtis James Jackson, known to the world by his stage name 50 Cent, had a troubled childhood. Being forced to look after himself from a very young age, Fetty perceived the world as a rough place that would break you if you don't stop stand up and fight. Selling narcotics at the age of 12, 50 Cent struggled to find a place to be a young kid, but there was something that pushed him, even through the roughest of times, and it was music. 50 Cent, she, he a hustler. He always been a hustler, man. He just always been a hustler, man. Like, this man, he, he ain't got, he don't got no parents and all that shit. He ain't got no mother, he ain't got no father. F shit, like, and look, and look at him now, bro. Like he's like he's successful right now. Like he, 
Like, he's he always gonna be gun, bro, like. Fifty started rapping at a very young age, but it wasn't until 1996 that he started making. Oh, I also forgot, like, he, he also, like, um, I, I forgot to add this in, like, he, um, you know, y'all remember that How to Rob song? Like, yeah, like, he, when he did this, everybody, he violated everybody. Yeah, bro, like, that's how he got his, like, you know, like, you know, like, come up, bro. Like, you know, he dissing everybody, bro. He, he didn't care, bro, like. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with that. He he just wanna eat just like everybody else. There's really nothing wrong with that. The records. After his friend introduced him to the work of Jam Master J and Run DNC, Fiddy never looked back. He knew very well that he wanted to pursue a career in the music industry. Eminem was right enough to recognize his hustle. After hearing his Guess Who's Back CD, Eminem talked to Dre and told him about the untapped potential that he saw in Fiddy as an artist. Dre listened to M, and before you knew it, Fiddy was signed to Aftermath. That's when things changed for both Fiddy and for Shug Knight. Why? Well, signing a deal with Dre and M meant that Fiddy was now moving with the big boys he would slowly become a hip-hop superstar and with that came a lot of response 50 cent he was that nigga back in the day bro i ain't gonna lie he was that nigga he was that nigga he was selling records and all that shit he had he he had hot music you know in the club you know like what up gangsta like all all them like bangers all them fire songs bro that y'all hear bro gangsta the amount of responsibility that makes you a totally different person. Around that time, Suge had just gotten out of jail after five years, and he got around to fixing the damage that was done to his record label. Little did he know that the person who would turn out to be his biggest competitor at the time was none other than that same person who was once signed to his label, Dr. Dre, and his freshly recruited talent, 50 Cent. Suge Knight knew very well that he wanted to accomplish anything, even remotely close to finding success with his Death Row Records label. He would have to assert his dominance. Meeting 50 Cent was an inevitable event, and in 2002 was when the first meeting took place. 50 Cent was in the studio filming the video for his now legendary track that skyrocketed his career called Into Club. At the time, he was accompanied by a group of his partners and friends who were with him at the set of the video shooting. However, during the production, one of the people started shouting, Suge Knight is here, and that's when things got a little messy. We were shooting in the club video, and uh, somebody said, Suge Knight here. And uh, 50 was, I was at the bar, Game was there, he was shooting in the club scene, and he stopped. Oh yeah, Game was there, I seen him. He was in the, he was in the club, like video shit, too. That was, that was the one when he was with, um, you know, he was cool with G-Unit, um, G he, was, he was with G-Unit. Sure came in with 30 Mexicans, like mm -hmm. you said. Which is weird, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he always roll with the so, Mexicans. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And I just remember Smurf and 50, 50 was like, what's up, man? What you want to do? Bang him. Yeah, bang him was like, bang what you want to do? He came, he was like, shoot outside. Shoot outside. Everybody had shit. He was running, dropping shit. Like, man, everybody going, I'm in front of the camera like this. Everybody shoot him. Running. Running. It was just gone. Yeah, now it, it kind of changed a little bit. Like, was somebody from the barbershop like punch you and knock you out after that? Like, you be knocked out like from the guy from the barbershop do that? Yeah, I heard about that. I heard like Shug got like Shug got snuffed in the, in the barbershop, bro. I heard about that, bro. I ain't gonna lie. It changed, and they be like, Shug's outside, and everybody be like, yeah. What do you want? Before you knew it, Suge Knight came up to 50 Cent with his goons. Allegedly, he approached 50 with 30 of his Mexican goons. All of 50's crew dispersed in front of the scary West Coast mogul who came to make a statement. He wanted to let everyone know that he was here and that he was going to be keeping a close eye on everything that was going on. But little did he know that 50 Cent couldn't care less about him showing up. When Suge Knight came up to his face and blew a big puff out of his cigar, 50 Cent cold-heartedly asked him, What's up, man? What do you want to do? Suge Knight apparently didn't say a word back to him. He just raised his hand and signaled his entourage to leave the place. That was the end of it. Suge was probably expecting to hear 50 Cent paying homage or begging for mercy. Yet, he got the response that was nothing like that. Clearly outnumbered and in danger, 50 Cent showed no fear to the intimidating gang that was standing right in front of him. The trauma stemming from his childhood days, the troubled times in the hood, and surviving multiple gunshot wounds, all of those things had an impact on 50 Cent. He didn't succumb under pressure when he 
50 cent, that's just him, man. He, he has no fear, bro. Like, he don't care, bro. Like, that's him, bro. He's gonna, he, he's gonna do what he wanna do. He's gonna troll. He's gonna do all all types of shit, whether people like it or not, bro. That us. Word. Came to hit him hard. Suge Knight knew very well at that moment that he had nothing further to gain by coming at Fitty. It was a failed mission. And after that, he and his crew left and Fitty continued on to make one of the most memorable rap videos of all time. Nobody knows exactly why Suge appeared that day. He was probably trying to send a message or to intimidate Fitty by letting him know that if he wanted to make it in the game, he'd have to go against him. But Fitty Scent already went through the worst. So what could Suge possibly bring that Fitty wasn't already aware of? When you realize that your life isn't in your hands, fear dissipates. Some people become traumatized. Others like Fitty flip it and it makes you cold, raw, and uncut. You figure you live your life the way you want and if it's meant for you to die however, whatever, then so be it. No regrets. Interestingly enough, from that day on, Suge Knight's power and influence slowly started to decay. He became more reckless by the day and his persona was chipping away all the hard work that he once put in. Once again, he ended up in prison and this time around, he was there to stay. In 2018, he was sentenced to 28 years after pleading no contest to voluntary Damn. manslaughter in a 2015 hit and run case. Meanwhile, Fitty Scent is still a present figure, doing music as well as venturing into other areas of business. He's doing shows as well, like Power. I never watched Power. I was Power, though, because I never watched that show day in my life. I ain't gonna lie. But, um, yeah, bro, like, that's, that's the... That's the um video. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. What is y'all thoughts about this situation between 50 and Shug? And y'all know the vibes. We're just checking out you are.